Hello, geometry students. Welcome back. We're in to chapter eight, which is our right triangles. We've been doing a lot with. So now that we've gotten our geometric mean and our Pythag and our Pythagorean triples, now we get into trigonometry. This is such a fun subject. So notice our objective. It says find trigonometric ratios using right triangles and solve problems using trig ratios. I've actually got an A, B, and C for this section 8.4 because there's a lot of information. I want to make sure that you understand the beginning because then the end gets easier as we go. So first of all, trigonometry is the measure of triangles. I should say in here, sides and angles. If we're being technical about this, trig means triangle and metri means to measure or the measurement of. So we're going to be talking about sides and angles. So let's start off with a trig ratio. We spent a lot of time in chapter 7 making ratios and proportions. We're not going to make proportions, but we do have ratios. Remember, a ratio looks like a fraction. So we use the lengths of the sides of a right triangle and we make a fraction or a ratio. Now there's a specific, very specific way that we set up our ratios of the lengths of the sides of our right triangles. Whoops. The most common trig ratios are probably buttons that you've seen on your calculators. They're sine, cosine, and tangent. On your calculator it's sin, cos, and tan but don't call them that. They are sine, cosine, and tangent. So when you ask a question and you say to your teacher, what's the cost of this? They're going to say, are you talking about cosine? Because that's the proper term. And last but not least, of course, if we're talking about fractions or ratios, you need to have them simplified. It looks a little different this time. Let's say we've got something like, oh, the sine of angle A is equal to 12 over 18. It doesn't matter what 12 over 18 is equal to, sine of angle A, another ratio, whatever. We still need to simplify this 12 over 18. If I divide them both by 6, or let my calculator do that, my final answer would be sine of angle A equals 2 thirds. So we're still going to simplify those ratios. So now let's talk about SOHCAHTOA. SOHCAHTOA is going to be your go-to term in order to do any problems from here on out. So it's kind of set up nicely if you can see how this all happens. So SOH is the first part of SOHCAHTOA. The S stands for sine, and then the O and the H, I should probably draw a little right triangle down here. Let's say I've got myself a right triangle. This is my angle. Notice how we get really fancy. We do that instead of saying X. That just, the word for it is theta. It just means an angle. Instead of saying angle A, we'd say sine of theta. So let's call this ABC. So now when you label a triangle, if I'm looking at angle A as my main angle, we all know that right across from the right angle is the hypotenuse, right? Well, now we need to know opposite and adjacent. If I'm only looking at angle A, the opposite is straight across from it. The adjacent is the leg that touches angle A, but it is not the hypotenuse. So that's really important. So if you can see this so, SOH, sine of any angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, OH. Turn it into a ratio. So I'd look for the opposite side. I'd put that value in there. I'd look for the length of the hypotenuse and put that value in.
So the ka, C-A-H, is going to give you big clues about what comes next. So the C stands for cosine, and cosine is going to be equal to A adjacent over H hypotenuse. So I find angle A, I look for the length of the adjacent side, adjacent leg, over the length of the hypotenuse. And then last but not least, TOA tells us the last part that we need. T stands for tangent, and that's going to be opposite over adjacent. So I look for the length of the opposite side to angle A and the length of the adjacent leg to angle A. SOCA TOA will be your most important piece of information. As we do work, I'm going to recommend write SOCA TOA right on the top of your paper so that you know everything you need to know. So let's do a little work here. So our trig ratios are sine of angle A. So notice I gave you the triangle. So if I look down all of these, it's talking about angle A, right? So angle A is my theta, or the angle that I'm looking at. And I need you to see that in this triangle ABC, straight across from capital angle A, vertex A, is small letter A. So if you ever have to draw your own, straight across from vertex B is small letter B. And straight across from C, the right angle, is our hypotenuse small letter C. So we know, I'm going to rewrite these. The more you write them, the better you do, right? So, so, ka, toa. So over here in this first column, sine of angle A is O over H, so opposite over hypotenuse. So if I look over on this, angle A is what I've got marked up here. The hypotenuse we know would be C, small letter C. Opposite is straight across, so small letter A. And B would be the leg that is adjacent. It touches it, but it can't be. It has to be a leg. It cannot be a um, vert, uh, hypotenuse. So in this particular case, if I was going to put letters in for opposite over hypotenuse, it would be A over C. I'm going to actually find those, and I'm going to put those in. So cosine of A, cosine is A over H, so adjacent over hypotenuse. So when I come over here, when I look for adjacent over hypotenuse, adjacent is B over the hypotenuse is C. And tangent of angle A, so tangent opposite over adjacent. I know you just wrote these down, but you cannot write them enough because it helps you to remember. So tangent, I'm going to go to my angle A. I'm going to find my opposite A over my adjacent B. Here's a little interesting trick or tip or something to be aware of. What if I asked you for the sine of angle B instead of angle A? Well, angle B, if I start looking down here, here's C and C, B and B. If I start looking at angle B instead of angle A and treat that as my theta or my angle, and I know sine is opposite over hypotenuse, wouldn't you agree that the hypotenuse stays the same, right? Doesn't sh doesn't change. It's still always opposite, opposite the right angle. But if I'm using B as my guide, my opposite is straight across. My adjacent then is the other leg. So opposite over hypotenuse, sine of B would be small b over C. Notice that my sine of angle B is the same as my cosine of angle A. It's not a coincidence because my opposite and my adjacent flip-flopped. So there's, that's a very specific thing. Sometimes it helps to just see that. So you start with whatever angle you're looking at and you identify. Some people like to write down opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Some people just do it without. All right, so let's do some practice expect, uh, express as a fraction. 
So if we're going to express these as a fraction, let's start, start. Notice it switches angles on us. So let's start with these three angle n, sine, cosine, and tangent of angle n. And I'm going to write down Sokotoa at the top. You probably have that written down somewhere on your paper. So I need to start with angle n. This is my theta. That's what I'm looking for. Now, the hypotenuse, what's the length of the hypotenuse? Everybody's thinking 37, right? Because that's my longest side. Then I need to get, do my, I think opposite is easiest, so straight across from n is 35, which means that the 12 has to be adjacent. So if all I'm doing is filling in and expressing my ra ratio, my um, making sure they're simplified, sine of n is opposite over hypotenuse, so 35 over 37 cannot be simplified. Cosine of n is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be 12 over 37. I'm pretty sure that can't be simplified as well. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so opposite is 35 over 12. Can't be simplified, and I do not turn that into a mixed number. I leave it improper in simplest form. So now I'm going to switch. The next three problems ask to find the sine, the cosine, and the tangent of angle L. So I don't care about N anymore. I'm looking at angle L. This is my theta. By the way, we'll never ask you to find the so sine, cosine, and tangent of the right angle. So here's the thing. If I'm switching to angle L, my hypotenuse is still 37, right? But the opposite for angle L is now 12 and the adjacent is 35. So the sine of L opposite over hypotenuse becomes 12 over 37. It's not a coincidence that it is the same as the cosine of the other angle. Cosine of L adjacent over hypotenuse. So that one becomes a 35 over 37. Again, not a coincidence that it's the same as the sine of the other angle. And tangent, opposite over adjacent, so 12 is my opposite over 35. Not a coincidence that it's the reciprocal of the tangent of the other angle. So there's some problems I'm going to ask you to do. So just understanding what's opposite adjacent hypotenuse, where they come from, and what angle you're looking at. Hopefully you're thinking to yourself so far, this is super easy. So this is the same problem. I don't think we need to go through this, but I put a little important question up here. I gave you this triangle, JKL, and I gave you the lengths. But what about if I didn't give you side KL? I gave you a 12 on side LJ and a 13 on side LK, but I still asked you to fill in everything. You need to know all three sides, right? You need to know opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse no matter which angle you're looking for. So think back a couple sections. If you're missing a side on a right triangle, what do you do? You're going to do some Pythag on the side. So a little side problem. So you're going to end up doing something like KL is a leg, not a hypotenuse. So maybe x squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared x squared plus 144 equals 169. Subtract x squared is 25. When you square root, you know that missing side has to be 5. Now I can go forward with, if I start here, angle K. Here's my hypotenuse. Here's my opposite and adjacent. So you might have to do a little side work. I call it side work because you got to do a little bit first. All right, so that's the big stuff. Now let's do some calculator stuff. If I ask you to find the value of a trig function, please make sure your, degree, or your calculator is in degrees, not radians. The only time you really have to think about this is if you're using a TI-84. It switches. The default is radians, not degrees. So when you do these problems, please make sure you do them. If you get a different answer, you know it's because your calculator is off. So, and know whether some calculators you have to put in the trig function first and then the degree. Some of you do the degree first. So just practice around, make sure that you get what you need. So the sine of 76, in my calculator I type in 76. Let's see, what do I type in? I type in sine 76 equals, 
and I got a 0 0.97. I'm just going to go to two numbers after the decimal. So a uh, cosine of 48, type that in, cosine 48. I got a 0 0.67. And try out a tangent of 12. I got a 0 0.21. Let's make ourselves a little note. Round to the nearest hundredth. So it will ask you to evaluate. And when it says evaluate, you're just popping over to your calculator. If it asks you for a ratio, you know you're setting up a ratio. Um, so there's a couple more problems here. Uh, give them a try. See if you get the same thing. When I did a cosine of 39, watch your rounding. I got a 0 0.78 because I think it was a 779. If I'm going to round to the nearest hundredth, this 9 tells me to bring that 7 up, round it up. Sine of 67, I got a 0 0.92. You get the idea, right? You got this. Try one last thing. Let's try a two last things. Let's try a tangent of 90 degrees. Remember how I said I would never really ask you to do sine, cosine, or tangent with the right angle? It's hard to do opposite and hypotenuse, right? They are the same thing. But we could type in tangent of 90 or sine of 90. Tangent of 90, did you get a mess? That one I got an error. That one won't typically work. However, sine of 90 does come out just to see that you got this button figured out. I hope that you got a 1 for a sine of 90. So that's it for section 84A. So identifying your opposites, adjacents, and hypotenuses and using uh, SOHCAHTOA and then doing using your calculate, calculator to evaluate. So thanks for sticking around for 8.4. That is, is 